There, there are um, multiple non-governmental organizations. Catholic Charities is at the top of that. Uh, that that I would say that they are actively uh, facilitating. Um, you can use a word, uh, you know, maybe it's a little harsh to say conspire, but but they're definitely facilitating the the illegal movement of aliens into this country, and the government is subsidizing what they're doing. Uh, the, the the backs of taxpayers, hundreds of millions of dollars. You, you all see me getting arguments with Congress. People say, "Why you get so angry? Why do you get so emotional?" Because I've seen so much death in this border. I talked to a 12 year old girl who had over 22 samples of DNA in her. Think about that. I've held a dying five year old, I, he was actually dead, five year old in the back of a tractor trailer. I was surrounded by 19 dead aliens. These cartels are ruthless. 31% of women are getting raped. Think about that. Children are dying, women are dying. So these are the trophies that the coyotes put up in the tree after they've raped a woman bras and panties each one of these represent a girl that was raped this is pure evil if you support open borders you are supporting it this caravan more than 40 percent of them are women and children other company minors and also adults military adults now on sunday they broke a barrier of the national guard and the national guard their statements later on that afternoon is that they felt embarrassed of the way that they acted and the way that they tried to stop this massive caravan now more people are joining in as they are walking on this town that is called Huehuetan. a lot of migrants they are located on the state of Chiapas, and as the Comar, the Commission of Refugees, that it has the actual statistics of how many migrants they are stationed right here at this state, it's more than 80,000 that they are waiting to move to the United States of America. But right now, 5,000 are the ones that they're walking. But let me ask you this, because this is the thing that a lot of people don't understand. Okay, they're coming from Guatemala, they're into Mexico, they break through the, the barrier, whatever but it takes resources you have to have food and water and and diapers and clothing and a place to shower on occasion on this quest how is this all getting done who's taking care of them who's picking up the bill so they are practically the ngos the catholic church and the united nations that they're the ones that they are aiding and abating to this to continue Last week, the Vatican-run charitable fund, Peter's Pence, announced that Pope Francis is sending a donation of $500,000 to South American migrant caravans seeking asylum in the U.S. We have another chain, another train of illegal immigrants about to come across the street right now and enter this facility. So this is at least the third one that we've documented since being here and going live at 2 o'clock. This is a non-stop around-the-clock phenomenon. There's no stopping. There's nothing that needs to be staged. All that needs to be done is it's being documented. And they, they think filming us is going to do anything. Man, if you want to ask me a question, feel free. I'll answer any question you have. We've got some questions for you, though. Like, how does it feel to be a part of the biggest illegal immigration pipeline in this nation's history? The, the media loves to show the women and children uh, just for the audience knowledge, many of those children have been sold to create fake families. There, there's a whole industry in Mexico and Central America on families selling their children or children being taken from families to get and, and sold to men so that they can bring them across the border. Then those children are sent back. It's called recycling. Uh, they're used again. In one case, we know of a child that was used 17 times uh, for this to bring military age men across the border. These little, these little kids are passed out, yeah. Little kids. You know what's really sad though is most of these children look like this isn't just a natural sleep. They are they are out. Look, no, look, they look they're sedated. They, they are sedated. sedated. They look at them. Look at them. Look at this is this is not look at he's just like completely lunched really over. So this is what we're telling you. A lot of times these children don't belong to some of these people. Okay. This is human trafficking. This is they're not even reacting, huh? You see how they don't react? Their pupils don't even react to yeah, the bright light in their face. Now these these kids are drugged. ¿Qué le dieron a los niños? This is really a reality. This, this is, is actually the United States right now. This is, this this is a third world country. This is the United States. And one of the journeys this reporting took me on 
was following cars from the Rio Grande Valley Catholic Charities from here on the street in downtown McAllen to the airport. And so we followed one of the vehicles and the lady that we followed, we could tell was nervous that we were following her. She kept stopping and pulling over and then going back on her route. We could tell that she was nervous. We thought maybe she was gonna call the police on us, but she ended up going all the way to the airport, stopping before she got to the departure area to get out of the vehicle and question us to ask who we were and what we were doing, to which we said, we're just journalists. We're just here reporting on the illegal immigration pipeline. She got all flustered and upset, but eventually got back in her unmarked vehicle, which we thought may have been a rental vehicle, took the unaccompanied minors, to the airport, dropped them off. They went inside and then went to whatever country they had plane tickets to. InfoWars reporters then came back a week ago and we noticed something even more odd about this same lady. She was still transferring people from this facility to the airport, but now they noticed that she had babies and kids. And she was saying, oh, these are my kids, these are my kids. And then the cameras rolled on her and she said, oh wait, they're not my kids. And she handed them off to other women who seemed really confused as to what was going on. I was coming down this alleyway right here, and in the middle of filing a report, we saw the same lady, which again has three that we noticed, Santo Amerte tattoos, known MS-13 affiliated tattoos. And as soon as we came up in this alleyway right here and started filming, she raced around to the driver's side of the vehicle. The kids were already loaded into the back. She raced around to the driver's side and tried to floor it and peel out of this alleyway. The kids weren't even buckled and the door was wide open. I know when I got down here to the border, I had various police officers, border agents, and, and many of them Catholics say, stay away from Catholic charities because they are encouraging the human trafficking and drug epidemic that we're seeing, which is obviously very anti-Christian, anti-America. Anti there is a, a an assembly line of migrants that are being very quickly legalized and moved right through the city that we're in, which is McAllen, Texas, uh, right into the United States, resettled to all four corners of the country. Just a little bit earlier uh, today, this morning, uh, this is Catholic Charities behind me, uh, and the uh, city bus station is right catty corner to where I'm looking at right here, uh, just offloaded uh, two bus loads filled with uh, migrants who are very freshly legalized after coming off the border. They went right into the door. Uh, they were processed in and in a very uh, short period of time, they will then be uh, walked over to the bus station where they'll board buses. And that process used to be out in the open here on these streets, uh, but now they've set it up so that you can't see it. There's a public park about 45 minutes down the road that they have federalized, you can't go in there, and uh, Catholic Charities is the whoa, main. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you mean they they, they federalized? You're, te you're te telling me that the federal authorities are taking control of state land in Texas? Is that what's happening down there at the border? My under we're, we're on our way there after this, but my understanding is that they've got National Guard and Border Patrol blocking all the entrances to this particular park and they've given it over to Catholic how's that, Charities. How is that legal and constitutional? They've done it. I don't know, but they've done it. And uh, that's where the buses came from that uh, that we saw. There, There's the video right there. I shot this this morning. Uh, these uh, buses are just coming, I'm told, all day long, dropping these migrants. All of those folks are still in there right now. Catholic Charities is one of the, in my opinion, where I've seen they're one of the largest facilitators of this human trafficking that's going on. They get government contracts to help facilitate all of these young UACs coming across the border. They put them through their facility. They find foster homes for them. They're not being vetted. They give them new clothing. You'll, you'll see that on the aircraft, they'll get clothing, shoes, backpacks, all of that. And then they just funnel them out to whoever. What we know so far is that uh, last year, 2021, uh, two million apprehensions were made roughly the expectation is that could be somewhere the actual numbers that came across could be between three and five million and half of those are military age men so we have millions of military age men coming into our country hardened criminals uh, battle tested these guys have been fighting and killing in many cases since they were 11 and 12 years old 
Now they're being settled into our country. And that's not to take into account the terrorists that are also coming in. We know they're coming in. We've caught them uh, and we expect more to be coming. The Department of Homeland Security has announced the arrest of two Yemeni nationals, both failing on their separate attempts to sneak into the United States. On January 29th, a 33-year-old man was arrested just 10 yards across the Mexico-Calexico border. He was then identified as being on the terrorism watch list along with the no-fly list and carrying a secret SIM card hidden in his shoe. Two months later, another 26-year-old Yemeni terrorism suspect was arrested two miles from the Calexico border station and was detained. We have always been just one slip up away from another 9-11. This has become a, a no-lose game for the cartels. They send across every single person that comes across. The cartel controls the entire border. Everyone who comes across that border has to pay them, whether it's the Gulf cartel here in, in, uh, in McAllen, Texas, or if uh, Sinaloa cartel out in the, the Arizona desert or the, the Tijuana cartel in Tijuana, any of these guys, they all control that. And all they've done now is switch. They still push the drugs. They just use people as a distraction. And the people are actually making them more money. The human trafficking, the slavery, the sex trafficking uh, is making them more money now than the drugs make them. But they simply use those people, send them across. Don't care if they get caught. Don't care if they get killed. Uh, it's They've already been paid. And if they do get sent back, they'll they'll uh, kidnap them and extort them again. It is unconscionable. Near El Paso, Texas, it's not just desperate families turning themselves into the border patrol, but adult men running away from the agents. Mostly adults who are not seeking asylum. Now with authorities tied up processing a historic number of migrants, more drug smuggling in the desert. For the first time, fentanyl is being smuggled between the ports of entry. Fentanyl being pushed through the desert around El Paso is up more than 355% compared to last year and 4,000% more than 2018. What makes it so easy to smuggle? The cartels find ways to uh, intimidate uh, migrants and find ways to uh, illegally have them transport that narcotic. Several of the border patrol agents, including the section chief of this section, said the cartels control the border now. Congressman Richard Hudson tells me Border Patrol agents are overwhelmed and overworked, and drug cartels know it. They'll send these groups of kids across the river. Border Patrol has to spend resources to scoop them up and take them back, and then two miles down the river, they send the drugs. And the people continue to come. I went last week to San Diego to the southern border, and what I found were nonprofits that were running secretive, closed down hotels. The Four Points Sheraton, SeaWorld, a Wyndham, a Ramada Inn. Those were just three of the ones that I visited. But these non government uh, organizations, that, these nonprofits, were housing migrants for several days. I managed to get in the gates, and when I was in there, I saw buses pulling up probably about 100 migrants over an hour got off of these buses. They were processed. Um, they were welcomed by people with open arms right. that were there in the facility, uh, co tested for COVID, and then they were given packets. And this packet is what I received from the whistleblower a few weeks ago. And these packets detail how to go to the airport, how to get past TSA without any identification, how to enroll your children in schools and assimilate in whatever community you desire to go in. Right. And it's encouraging uh, illegal immigration. I'm curious, what nonprofit is, is putting these packets out? Well, there are several, uh, but the biggest defenders in San Diego are the Catholic Charities and the Jewish Family Association. There are a lot of social justice hijacked religious organizations, and I pinpoint the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops as among the largest profiteers in all of this, and I am a Catholic myself. Uh, when they talk uh, about their mission to, uh, you know, fulfill their for faith and talk about compassion, for them really, what, what, what's at stake is billions of dollars of tax subsidies subsidies as well, because the refugee resettlement racket, for example, has uh, poured billions of dollars into the coffers of the Catholic bishops and many of their sub-organizations, many of them which trace their roots uh, to partnerships with some of the most radical figures on the left. After an intense standoff overnight, during which police used sticks to try to beat back the mostly Honduran migrant group.
these non-governmental organizations like Catholic Charities and Lutheran Ministries. We can't continue to allow them to be the travel agencies for uh, illegal immigrants. So we're going to revoke their licenses. They're 501c3 not-for-profit organizations. I don't care that the Biden administration has given them federal taxpayer grants. We're going to not allow them to operate here because they're aiding and abetting human and sex trafficking and they're working hand-in-hand -hand with the terrorist organization, the cartels. What's pending before the legislature is going to be, I think, anybody who's involved in furthering an illegal migration, you know, can be held accountable. What are the U.S. bishops doing about any of this? They try to tell you, well, this is a humanitarian thing that we're doing. No, 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 it's destroying human life in America. They're not helping Americans in any way, shape, or form, and they're not helping these other people either who are victims of the, car, the, the drug cartels, the human trafficking cartels. And let me tell you something, there's a rule of law that governs the whole world. It's, it's been handed down to us, it's written into our hearts, the natural law. And we are not allowed as Catholics to do an evil to achieve an apparent good, an alleged good. And what these bishops are doing by supporting Catholic charities, which are helping these illegals get over into America and helping this all take place, what they're doing is they're doing evil to achieve an alleged good, which isn't good, as I said earlier. It is time for them to turn in their miters. These monsters and miters are destroying humanity on that side of the river, and they're destroying humanity on this side of the river. And we've had enough.